Daniel, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Arrow. Thanks for having me on your show. Absolutely, dude. We were together back in 2021, and I found you to be so inspiring. And then look at you now with Kingdom Ninja. My God, you know that you're being used as a tool to inspire others. Yes, yes. And I, I don't take it lightly. And, and I, again, I use my platform not just for my own sake of being the best athlete that I can be, but I, I recognize that I am a role model to so many young people watching this sport, watching this TV show. And so this this book is just another tool and a resource to encourage, to inspire, to point people to a higher purpose, as well as give them the tools and the resources to overcome whatever obstacles that they will face in life, be it physical, you know, mental or even spiritual. Yeah. I mean, triumphs and trials, they, they, they go hand in hand. They have to have each other because you, you can't understand a victory if you've never felt a loss. You're exactly right about that. And gosh, if you've followed my journey over the years, I have experienced so many, you know, what the world would consider like loss, terrible loss. I mean, losing a million dollars in uh, 2019 by a couple seconds. And then the season finale here just a couple days ago, I, I did it. I beat the last course. But then a, a good friend of mine did it two, about a second and a half faster and got the million. And so I've, I've experienced these moments that the world would see as great loss and defeat. But for me, I, I'm doing what I love. I'm making an impact in my sphere of influence. And I'm using every single um, story to encourage, to inspire, to showcase what it looks like to fall and fail, but get back up. Mistakes are fine for me. I don't mind at making mistakes, but I'm, I'm not going to repeat them. I'm going to learn and grow every single, uh, every single time. And I want others to, to glean that, learn that from my life. See, I wish people would understand the transitions that we need to study because we all go through transitions and it could be the scent of perfume. It could be just something outside your window, but we don't listen to those transitions. We just say, well, I'm in a bad mood. No, that's a choice. That bad mood is a choice. You're exactly right. And, and we don't even realize how much more in control we are of ourselves. I mean, I'll wake up on the wrong side of the bed at times, Arrow, and I'll say, wow, this this is going to be a bad day. And then I'll stop myself and I say, mm-hmm. why are you saying that, Daniel? Like, what, what gives you the right to d- dictate how the rest of this day is going? You just got started. Take a second, Daniel, and be grateful. I, matter of fact, I have a, a gratitude journal on my phone for the days that I wake up on the wrong side of the bed and I stop and I jot down a few sentences. I'm grateful for the bed that I just slept in. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful for the air conditioning that that keeps my room cold and, and gives me the ability to sleep well. I'm grateful for the, the wife or the family that I have. I'm grateful that I that I have a job. I'm grateful that you know I, I have a body that is that is fully functioning. Man, and you you do that for five minutes, it will flip a switch and the rest of the day is going to be so different so much better off and it's because we took the time the discipline to to really focus in on what's really important and have an attitude of gratitude see that's the very reason for the past 29 years the first thing that i do when i get up in the morning i write i have three pages that i have to write and then i do a defrag journal where where i go in i ask myself questions and then i question the answers because i if i don't know who i am how can i expect anybody else to even to even think they know who i am yeah, wow, that that's awesome. That's so powerful. And I think more people, one, need to, to realize just how important having time, alone time to sit, be with your thoughts and, mm-hmm. and process, you know, who you are, why you think the way you are, why you believe the things that you do. And I think if we can encourage people to begin to take those steps in their daily lives, gosh, people will be so much more fulfilled. People will be so much more um, um, secure in their identity, so much less prone to just jumping on the next bandwagon, right? And realizing after the fact that that's not where you should find fulfillment. You need to find it in who you are, where you're at, and what you believe. And where it's coming from, dude, Kingdom Ninja really puts it on that because when you talk about the three sections here, the first one is holistic, and that's an important step that people need to jump into and have patience with it. Yeah, yeah. You know, when it comes to, to, to physical health and wellness, I mean, you know, whether you're an elite level athlete striving to be the greatest in your field or you're just a fan of the show that, that wants to, to get off the couch and get moving, you know, the, the tools and the, the exercises that I write down in this book, you know, are ones that I think can be applied to 
any sport or to anyone's, you know, where anyone is at as a, as a person, an individual. And so I, I'm really excited to get to share it. And literally, again, wherever you are on the spectrum of health and, and fitness, you know, you can learn so much from this book. And I made it a really fun, exciting read too. A lot of it is to, you know, my my background, my, my you know, biography, mm-hmm. all the stories the behind the scenes of what it's been like for me as a competitor on this this world's toughest obstacle this tv show and just the production that it is so it's i think people will learn a lot they'll they'll enjoy it it's a very fun simple easy read uh, and so people people will learn a lot from it we become this generation that has become dependent on Red Bull and all the and even Prime. And and the thing is, is that we think that's where our happiness is. And a book like this is a physical tool that you can, and you know, I, I like the idea that you can get it digitally, but you need the physical book so you can use a yellow highlighter on it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, you know, just to have have something that you hold in your hands that you flip the pages mm-hmm. through the you smell the, the pages themselves. This it becomes more of a sensory type of thing than simply reading a, a digital text. And and I'm for that. Like I, I've got an, an iPad full of different books that I read, but there is something different about holding it, smelling it, you know, seeing it. There's all the senses being utilized that helps you retain the information that is at your fingertips. And I wanted a resource that was you know, so valuable that brought great value in so many different areas, you know, from motivational to my stories to then, you know, the physical tools of, of training your, your own body and whatever capacity, but then also the, the mindsets that I've learned and, and, you know, grown into as an athlete and as a person, um, I, I think it is a great tool just to, to build better people because at the end of the day, that's what I, what I want my platform to do is to build better people, to encourage to inspire, to point them to a higher cause and a greater purpose mm-hmm. in life. Yeah, because it's about outreach. It's about you know helping to inspire other people. And you, you can pr- pretty much touch on that when you talk about perseverance and faith. And, and I don't think listeners understand that they can switch positions. You can have the faith to go do something and the perseverance to see it through. But sometimes you need that perseverance to get into a world of faith. Yeah, yeah, you're you're absolutely right, and and along those same lines too, I talk about how you know just uh, the the people that we incorporate into our lives are vital. You know, we we and I talk about this in the book. We were never meant to just be like lone wolf or or, or lone rangers. Like it makes for great movies, like great action movies, but we need people in our lives. Like our lives are going to be built of the sum total of who it is that's speaking into our lives. You know, there's that saying, you know, you show me your five friends and I'll show you, you know, your future. And I do believe that there is great truth in that. Like the people that we surround ourselves with are going to help determine and even dictate where we go in life. Because if you want to go, if you want to go fast in life, you'll go by yourself, but you'll fizzle out. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go the distance, if you want to go far in life, you'll go with people, with others. They'll help regulate you. They'll help keep you focused on the goals. I'm surrounded by people in my life that keep me in check. They're not just yes men, but they're they're those that know my my strengths, but also know my weaknesses. I've opened myself up in a way that says, hey, here is me. Here's who I am from the greatest to the, the least, my goods, but also my bad and my ugly. And they love me regardless, and they help point me towards my goals in life and I think you know there's a big emphasis that I write in my book that you know once we have these goals once we know who we are and where we want to go in life we need to begin to find people that are like-minded that help keep us accountable and keep us focused on where it is that we are going in life because otherwise we will have bad days and you don't want to make those big decisions on those bad days because then we'll we'll derail ourselves altogether if we let ourselves stay in those 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 seasons of you know the, the bible talks about the valleys of shadows of death like we all go through those difficult seasons but we can't let them form us or shape us for the worse. Yeah, and see, so many people settle in on that. I mean, there are times that, you know, I mean, I, I'll, I'll the people that are very close to me, I'll, I'll tell them, use this particular tone in your voice, and I'll snap out of where, I, where it is that I am. I need you to trigger me so that I know, oh, I'm being a real butt right now. Yeah. Yeah, you're exactly right. And to, to have relationships where you actually have that level of trust Mm -hmm. you know i i have a lot of friends i have a lot of peers i have a lot of you know acquaintances but i've got very few that have that level of access to my life where i mean they've got free reign to literally call me out and i know that they're doing it from a place of love and from a place with zero agenda other than to help me be the best version of myself that i can be and you know i 
I don't, I don't cast my pearls before swine and just, you know, open myself up to any random person in my life because then you've got gossip. Then you've got, yes. you know, people that will let you down, people that don't have your best interest. So when you find those few people or when, when, you know, they're brought into your life, treat them like the treasure that they are right <laughs> and 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 open up enough to say like hey here this is me i want to get to a better place and i'll do my best to help you we have zero agenda other than to be there for each other almost like a band of brotherhood you hear about you know men that come back from the the armed forces mm-hmm. and their platoon or their brigade that they were a part of they are brothers they have each other's backs because of the commitments that they've made they've been through they faced death together and they've come through it and those are some of the strongest relationships and i've, I've never served in the armed forces but i desire to have the type of relationships in my life that say yeah, I'll step up to the plate for you. Yes, I'll, I'll go to battle with you. And I want to to help you in any way that I can. And to have those types of relationships, dude, it will, it will change your life. It will change the course and the direction of your life when you can find people that you can truly go to war with. Absolutely. When injury sets in, because it's in, in martial arts, because I'm a third degree black belt, it, it wasn't if I get hurt, it's when I get hurt. And it mentally can really poison your soul. I mean, we're looking at Aaron Rodgers right now, who who has you know put himself out on that line. Four plays later, he's out for the season. How do you deal with other people's injuries as well as your own to keep them moving forward? Oh man, and gosh, the more the more thought that you can put into it before injuries take place, mm-hmm. I think the better that you'll be able to go through them. So for example, for me, I, I'm, I'm in a very, very high impact, very high dynamic uh, sport when it comes to OCR, like obstacle course racing. We're flying through the air, we're, we're landing hard on our joints, or whether it's shoulders or hands, fingers, tendons, you know, there's a, so much margin and room for error, for injuries. They are inevitable. I've had so many over the years Mm -hmm. so the mindset that i've developed is okay i don't ever plan for injury i will do everything it takes to prevent injuries but if and when they do end up happening what am i going to do in those moments and I've, i've determined within myself to say okay what can I do? How can I continue to train? What do I need to do? Where do I need to, to start with my my you know um, physical therapy? What foods do I need to eat to to aid in recovery? Anti-inflammatory, even going on fasting for small periods to give my body complete recovery time to focus on injury uh, injury areas. You know, I've done so much study and research to say, okay, I don't ever want to be injured, but if and when I do, yep. I want to be as knowledgeable i want to be as ready i want to have every tool in place and every resource at my disposal to help me get through it so i have friends that are in the health and fitness world that that i call up and say hey man i just i tweak something what do i do what are the steps i need to take i've got books and resources that i study and say okay here's here's the area of injury how can i become as knowledgeable as possible in that given area and and begin to to move forward and of course you know when those moments come the emotions say you'll never do it again you'll never compete again you'll never be where you were but the reality is and i i tell myself you know there's a difference between the truth now of what is the reality of something that's happening now but then the greater truth is that does not necessarily have to always be the case so i i teach myself to say yeah I've broken something or I've strained or pulled or, or, or torn something. That is true. But the greater truth is that doesn't mean that I'll never play my sport again. It might be a, a hard road to recovery, but I have determined that I will do whatever it takes to get back at it. And I think someone like Aaron Rodgers, a lot of these elite level athletes, they have a similar mindset because injuries are prone mm-hmm. when you are competing at such a high level. And if you can learn that mindset, at a young age or at you know the beginnings of whatever sport you're doing, God, the better off that you'll be when those days come. Wow. You are a man of inspiration, sir, and you're using that tool quite well. The name of the book is Kingdom Ninja. Where can people go to a website to find out more about you and give you some love? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got a direct link where, where you can buy it, where it's uh, kingdom-ninja.com. Uh, they can get it, you know, a hard copy, a digital copy. I even spent eight hours in studio recording the nice. audio book for it. And it, it was such a joy. And honestly, you can get it anywhere books are sold. But uh, yeah, again, that's that's uh, kingdom-ninja.com where they can just get a direct link right there. Man, will you be brilliant today, okay, sir? Yeah, thank you very much. You as well, Arrow. Thank you.